I am Stephen Hawking by Brad Meltzer, illustrated by Christopher Eliopoulos. From the series Ordinary People Change the World, I am Stephen Hawking by Brad Meltzer, illustrated by Christopher Eliopoulos. I am Stephen Hawking. Do you know what a boundary is? It's something that tells you the limit, how far you can go, but nothing can limit our minds. Today, people call me one of the smartest thinkers of all time, but on my first day at preschool, I cried non-stop because I missed my parents so much. Wah! How's the new kid? He's gonna need some help. Growing up in northern London, I wasn't the best student. My work was messy, and my handwriting wasn't very good. Why do I need good handwriting? Those are the rules. Don't ask questions. I didn't always use a wheelchair. You'll hear that story soon. Back when I could walk and run, I wasn't great at sports. When it came to choosing teams, I was almost always picked last. I guess we're stuck with hawking. When I was 12 years old, a schoolmate made a bet that I would never be successful. I'll bet you a bag of candy on it. You got it. Sometimes it can be hard when you're different, but I liked seeing things in my own way, a more creative way. When my dad built a dollhouse for my sister, I added plumbing and lighting. Now your dolls can see better. Um, I guess that does make sense. I was also very curious, taking apart my toy trains to see how they worked. Huh, so that's how it runs. I wasn't so good at putting them back together. Thankfully, my parents encouraged my curiosity. In our house, we did a lot of what you're doing right now, reading books. Our house was full of them, on shelves, on the furniture, everywhere. Since we had almost no heating, the walls of books helped keep out the cold. If you came over to my house for a playdate, sometimes my family would even read during dinner. Stephen, is this normal? It is here. Other times, my parents would have us debate topics that weren't usually discussed by kids. So tell us, John, what are your thoughts on the modern state of religion? People called us eccentric, which is a nice way of saying we were weird, but I liked having my mind constantly challenged. My father's job was studying tropical diseases. He let me look through the microscopes at his lab. Cool! He even showed me around the insect house, where he kept infected mosquitoes. Er, Dad, should I be worried? You're fine. But the best gift my parents gave me was nurturing my sense of wonder. We'd lie on the grass staring up at the sky. The stars called to me. What was beyond called to me. Where did it all come from? How did it begin? And where do you think it all ends? You mean the universe? All of it. Where does eternity come to an end? Haven't you ever wondered? How can there be something without a finish? That's a beautiful question. My parents taught me to question things and think big. They taught me to use research and science to find answers. The human mind is incredible. It can imagine the beauty of the heavens or the tiny particles we're made of. But to achieve our full potential, we all need a spark. So often, it comes from a teacher. Welcome to math, Mr. Tata. Mr. Tata opened my eyes to the power of math. Math is the blueprint of the universe. Measure how far the stars are and you can map the galaxy. Behind every exceptional person is an exceptional teacher. In high school, my sense of wonder grew. My friends and I would invent games and build computers together. We made it out of pieces of clocks and old telephones. Look how small this computer is! 
we got it down to the size of a refrigerator. Best of all, we'd have long conversations about whatever we found interesting, from radio-controlled cars to one of my favorite topics. How do you think the universe actually started? That's a really good question. To find the answer, I needed to understand something called physics, which is the study of matter and energy and how they work in time and space. Since nearly everything is made of matter, we hope physics can show us how the universe began and how matter and energy behave through the universe. That sounds fascinating. I started college when I was 17. I didn't have many friends, so I joined the boat club to meet people. Since I was the smallest, my job was to steer and tell everyone when to row. But in my first race, I accidentally sent the boat off course and got us disqualified. What'd you do? You messed it up! Here's my real secret. Back then, I wasn't always interested in my schoolwork. I cared more about going to parties. Soon enough, though, life was about to take an unexpected turn. In my last year of college, I fell down some stairs, thinking I was clumsy. At first, the doctor made a joke of it. Stop partying so much. Over the next year, it got worse. My body was getting harder to control. At 20 years old, I didn't want anyone to worry, so I kept my fears to myself. That's weird. Why is my hand shaking? At Christmas, I fell while ice skating and couldn't get up. My mother knew something was wrong. You need to go to the doctor. After many tests, I got terrible news. I had a rare disease called ALS, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, which affects the nerve cells until the muscles in your body don't work anymore. So my arms and legs are going to stop working, and then the rest of my body won't work either? I'm sorry, Stephen. They told me I had two and a half years to live. I was 21 years old. I was scared and in shock. But when they told me my life would end, it made me realize how much more I wanted to accomplish. Right then, every new dame became a bonus. Cambridge University. Where are you going? To the library. I haven't figured out how the universe works. Whatever time I have left, I need to make it count. With life, I had hope. My disease was breaking my body. Eventually, it would slur my speech and then take my voice entirely. But the one thing it could never touch? My brain. Do you know what else helped me? I fell in love. This is Jane, whom I married. Now I have something to live for. I started working even harder, and to my surprise, I very much liked it. One of my biggest eureka moments came while I was getting into bed. I had to go very slowly because of my disability, which meant I had more time to think. Easy. There you go. I've got it! Got what? Black holes! A black hole is an area in, our, in outer space with gravity that's so powerful, nothing can escape its pull. On that night, I came up with a new theory that the boundary of a black hole can never decrease, never get smaller. They keep getting bigger and bigger. I was rewriting the rules for how we understand black holes. Eventually, that led to an even bigger question. Could anything escape the pull of a black hole? To my surprise, the answer was yes. It's true. Even at the boundary, where it pulls the hardest, a certain type of energy can escape. Today, that energy is called Hawking radiation. It's one of my greatest discoveries. It also helped me prove that instead of always expanding, 
black holes could shrink, evaporate, and even vanish. Th that's not possible. It is. I had it wrong before. Oh my. To prove my new theory, I had to rethink and modify my first theory. That's not a bad thing. The best scientists always keep asking questions. Real intelligence means you're willing to admit you may be wrong. In the end, it became clear that black holes weren't completely black, and they certainly weren't inescapable. In life, as in outer space, even for the darkest holes, there's always a way out. All you need is the right energy. Over time, my discoveries revolutionized astrophysics, but as my disease got worse, I lost the use of my hands. I couldn't write or type, so for people to understand my ideas, I needed help from others, like my wife, Jane. So, the boundary of a black hole is called an event horizon? It also forced me to develop new skills. I wasn't great with mathematical equations. Instead, I began to explore the universe with my mind, thinking in pictures, mentally traveling through time and space, trying to imagine how the universe works. When the body loses one set of tools, it sometimes finds new ones. My disease took so much from me, but it also gave me skills no one else had helping me use my creativity to solve problems no one else could. Eventually, I realized that the universe has no boundaries, just like the human mind. In my early 30s, I used an electric wheelchair for the first time. I even took it to San Francisco and went racing down the hills. Professor Hawking, no! My wife and I were some of the first people to advocate for ramps so people with disabilities could navigate like everyone else. If you don't have a ramp, there's no way for others to get up the stairs. When my disease took my voice and I couldn't speak, a computer expert came up with a solution. Push this button to move the cursor and spell things. The computer will say it out loud for you. Thank you so much, Walt Woltoz. And when my hands stopped working, I couldn't even push a button. Do you think I let that stop me? Move your cheek, and the sensor on your glasses will move the cursor. I like this voice. This is my voice now. In addition to being a scientist, one of my biggest dreams was to write a book that would be fun to read and would explain the universe to millions of people. A Brief History of Time made me one of the most famous people on the planet. But a very important result of my newfound fame was raising awareness of my disease and helping other people with disabilities. I speak for the people you can't hear. I have been able to move and communicate because I have access to the world's best technology. We need to make sure it is easily and cheaply available to anyone who needs it. In my life, people saw someone who was odd, who was different, who was disabled, but they didn't see me. I am more than my wheelchair. I am more than my robotic voice. I am more than my disability. Do not let anyone limit you. As kids, we stare up at the stars and with wonder. We believe that anything is possible. That should never change. Life can bring hardship, but it can also bring hope. Stay curious and keep rolling forward. When you do, you'll find endless possibilities. As one of the world's top physicists and cosmologists, Professor Hawking was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom and was recognized with many top scientific honors. But he still said there was plenty more he wanted to learn. He's been featured on The Simpsons and even on Star Trek, where a character played cards with holograms of him, Albert Einstein and Sir Isaac Newton. 
He also never stopped fighting for the rights of people with disabilities. He made sure that the Intel technology that helped him speak was available to everyone who needs it. Using my mind, I have been the farthest reaches of our galaxy, into a black hole, and the back to the beginning of time. I have been through highs and lows, success and suffering. I have been able-bodied and disabled. I have been praised and criticized. But I have never been ignored. We are all time travelers on a journey to the future. Let us work together to make that future a place we want to visit. Be brave. Be curious. Be determined. Overcome the odds. It can be done. I am Stephen Hawking. Defy boundaries. Black holes are not the eternal prisons they were once thought. So if you feel you are in a black hole, don't give up. There's a way out. Stephen Hawking Timeline Born January 8, 1942, in Oxford, UK. 1959, begins University College, Oxford. 1962, attends University of Cambridge to begin Ph.D. 1963, diagnosed with ALS. 1965, marries Jane Wilde. 1967, son Robert is born. 1970, daughter Lucy is born. 1970, Eureka Moment About Black Holes. 1974, Discovers Hawking Radiation. 1979, Became Lucasian Professor of Mathematics at Cambridge. 1979, Son Timothy is born. 1988, A Brief History of Time is published. 1995, divorces Jane Wilde and marries Elaine Mason, 2009, awarded Presidential Medal of Freedom, and March 14, 2018, dies in Cambridge, England. The top left is Stephen at age four. The top right is Stephen and wife Jane. And the bottom photo is Stephen experiences zero gravity aboard G-Force One in 2007.